Hey everybody, John Kossuth here, and this will be the first installment of a video series I'm planning to do on this channel. While everyone and their brother are doing perfect runs of Mega Man games, I'll be taking a similar approach to a different series of games. I'll be tackling... Kirby's Dreamland! <laughs> this was one of the first games I played when I was little, so this is gonna be a long walk down memory lane for me. <laughs> However, given that the Kirby games are kind of easy to tackle by avoiding damage alone, I've decided to up the ante by making this a no-damage pacifist run. Also, I'll keep flying to a minimum, using it only if jumping alone won't help me move forward. It should be challenging enough to make this interesting, so I hope you enjoy it. Here we have Green Greens, the starting grassy level of every Kirby game. Oh no, Skinner was right! The butterflies! They're evil, man! <clears throat> Moving on. Those two Waddle Dees could actually be jumped in a single leap. Took me a while to figure that out, but it's possible. Here's one of those segments where I actually have to fly. Alright. Those dancing mushrooms are cappies. I can inhale their caps to make them naked, but I am not inhaling, so no force stripping them. The hopping baby chicks are called Twizzies. The dancing elf is a Poppy Brothers Jr. And these crowds of enemies are responsible for my many outtakes at this level. That's right, I'm doing outtakes. Real original, I know. <laughs> Alright, hopping on that warp star takes us straight to the mini-boss. Meet Poppy Brothers Sr. He throws bombs, he hops around, and, uh, he's a bigger version of Poppy Brothers Jr. And he's dead. And there's a Poppy Brothers Jr. rolling on an apple. Wait a moment to jump, and proceed. And because I forgot to mention them, those are Bronto Burts, not to be confused with my dad. Both of them are angry, but Bronto Burts, uh, they fly and they get in your way. Plus, they like to ambush you, which is really mean of them. The giant bears called Grizzos, they do two points of damage, but I'm not going to get hit by them. I find this area a little bit easier to navigate, probably because there's a little bit more room to dodge the enemies. Case in point, that Bronto Bird that just passed by. Okay, door time! Welcome to the area where ledges are way too high to jump. So it's time for Kirby to puff up and fly! And there's another segment where I have to fly- DEAR GOD THEY'RE NAKED! PUT SOME PANTS ON, CAPPIES! I don't care if this is supposed to be your house, CHILDREN ARE PLAYING THIS GAME! I mean, I'm a child in my mind, so please, this is not Kirby right back at ya, you are NOT NUDIST! PUT SOME PANTS ON! So anyway, it's boss time. Dang, nudist cappies. Here we fight a reoccurring boss in the Kirby series. Meet Wispy Woods. He blows puffs of air at you, he drops apples, three at a time, and he's pathetically easy. Simply just hide under his mouth, inhale the apples, spit the apples back at him, rinse, repeat, and he'll go down in no time. See, he's not too hard at all. This calls for an adorable victory dance. Woohoo! I can't say that I finished this stage on my first try, so here's a few clips on my failed attempts, plus a few extras about this stage. Enjoy! Oh, redwood tree. When we were young, we used to go under the redwood tree. After a few seconds into Kirby's falling animation, you can actually kill enemies without hurting yourself. Of course, that breaks the rules of this challenge, so I'm not going to be doing any of that. While this was a run that ended in failure, I thought it would be a nice opportunity to show what's behind that door. It contains two pep brews, energy drinks that restore two points of damage. FREE ENERGY! This was part of a run that failed miserably. It's too embarrassing to show what happened, but I will show you an item that I did pass. Here we have Maxim Tomatoes. They completely restore your health. The American Instruction Manual actually called them magic food bags, but they're tomatoes. Trust me. Anyway, on to the outtakes. Okay, jump over this guy. Gotta avoid the grizzle. No! I got hit and I heard a waddle dee. Darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it! A good way to avoid ambushes from Bronto Burts is to duck under them. <clears throat> As I was saying. No! Not the waddle dees! Why? I find this part of the area a bit hard to dodge through. See what I mean? Okay, gotta make this jump, but- <gasps> WADDLE DEE! <laughs> ah! 
<sighs> I feel better. Timing your jumps around this part is kind of treacherous. <sighs> and so we begin Green Greens. I have nothing to say for that. And here we have this area, full of precise jumps. Which I did make. Okay, past all of those ambushes and... Ah! I've been grizzled. This has been a rather fun challenge so far, even with my failed attempts at it. Now to show you my thoughts on Green Greens through a difficulty analysis. I'm sort of borrowing the concept that Royal Mithril does for the Buster-only perfect runs, only I'll be giving separate ratings for both the boss and the stage. So first, let's start with the stage. I give the level a 2 out of 10. There are some jumps where you need to be careful and patient, such as the first part where you're nearing the Warp Star. If you don't time your jumps right, you'll smack into a Waddle Dee or that Pops Brothers Jr. Once you hop on the Warp Star, everything is a tiny breeze in comparison with a very easy mini-boss and small dodging segments with Bronto Birds. Poppy Brothers Sr. is an extremely easy mini-boss with very little to his pattern. Once you get to the door at the very end of that part, there's barely anything to avoid. Even with the Waddle Dee running around the boss door, it's not that hard to slip through. Speaking of the boss... I give Wispy Woods a 1 out of 10, and even then, that's being extremely generous to him. Just to give you a good idea, I have attempted this stage about 15 times, and not one of those attempts were ended by the boss. There's really nothing to him. He drops three apples, and he has six bars of health. If you take three of his apples and spit them back at him, he's half finished. Also, he can't hit you if you're right under his nose. He really has nothing to his battle. All in all, a very easy stage with an extremely easy boss. And thus, we have a foothold. Up next, we enter the castle of older Nintendo game references. Until then, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I shall see you all next time. This is John Cosseth, signing off. See ya!